Don't ever travel without a bread clip in your pocket. Here's why. This simple trick might just save you from unexpected travel hassles. Francois, did you seriously forget the travel checklist again? Claire's voice was a mixture of amusement and exasperation. Standing in the crowded check-in line at Marseille Provence Airport, Francois fumbled through the pockets of his worn backpack. His fingers brushed over loose change, spare earbuds, and then landed on something small and rigid, a bread clip. He pulled it out and stared at it, momentarily puzzled. Claire, a 32-year-old travel planner who thrived on organization, caught sight of it and chuckled. You and that silly thing, why do you even carry that? I don't know, Francois replied with a sheepish grin. Maybe it'll come in handy one day. The day had not started well for Francois, a graphic designer with a habit of leaving things until the last minute. The morning chaos included a panicked search for his passport and a broken handle on Claire's suitcase, all setting the tone for what felt like an omen of a trip. Despite the hiccups, they were finally boarding their flight to Athens, the first leg of their journey to Santorini. Claire's meticulous planning had paid off. She chose to travel during April, the shoulder season when the weather was perfect and crowds were thinner. Francois remembered how she'd spent hours researching flights in incognito mode to avoid price hikes. She even switched currencies to save on booking fees, a trick that had piqued his curiosity but ultimately convinced him of her travel prowess. The plane took off smoothly and Francois settled into his seat, grateful for Claire's travel know-how. He replayed her travel tips in his head. Always roll clothes for more space, use shower caps for toiletries, and never forget a power bank since airport outlets are unreliable. He glanced at Claire, who had pulled out a notebook labeled Travel Checklist. She tapped the pages lightly and raised an eyebrow at him, making them both chuckle. Three hours later, they arrived in Athens, greeted by the bustling airport. The couple had a six-hour layover before their connecting flight, a duration too long to sit comfortably and too short to venture into the city. The tension from their morning mishaps hadn't fully dissolved, and the delay weighed on Francois. As they waited, Francois noticed a group of travelers fighting over charging ports. He patted his pocket, relieved to feel the outline of his power bank. Claire had reminded him repeatedly to pack it. You know, this is why people need checklists, she muttered as she leaned back and closed her eyes for a quick nap. Francois smirked and glanced down at the bread clip in his palm. He absently fiddled with it, wondering if it truly had any purpose or was just a leftover from some forgotten task. The airport announcements were drowned out by the hustle and chatter around them. Francois took out his phone to pass the time, mentally noting more travel tips that popped into his mind. Always have a crayon for writing on planes. Pens don't work due to pressure. A pillowcase to stuff with clothes for an instant pillow and a dryer sheet for fresh smelling clothes. Claire had scoffed at those tips calling them gimmicky. But Francois couldn't help but think there might be a little magic in the mundane. The minutes stretched into hours and the airport felt increasingly suffocating. Francois couldn't shake the feeling that their luck had only dipped further since arriving. He glanced at the flight departure board and saw their connection to Santorini was delayed by an additional two hours due to sudden weather changes. Claire stirred from her nap, noticed the update, and sighed. Great, just what we needed, she said, rubbing her temples. They decided to grab a quick meal at a cafe nearby. The small, crowded space was alive with the clinking of cutlery and the aroma of freshly baked bread. While waiting for their order, Francoise's phone buzzed. It was a notification from their hotel in Santorini. Their reserved room might not be available due to an unexpected plumbing issue. He showed the message to Claire, whose eyes widened. Just call them directly, Claire instructed, a hint of stress lacing her usually calm tone. Francois did as told, and after a few tense minutes of explaining, the hotel manager promised them a room upgrade at no extra charge for their trouble. Francois hung up, exhaling in relief. Your tip about direct booking worked, he said, trying to lift the mood. The cafe's atmosphere grew tense as more travelers gathered, muttering about their own delays and concerns. Francois felt a pang of guilt for being so focused on their issues when everyone seemed to be facing similar troubles. Claire, who had taken out her travel notebook to double-check their itinerary, tapped it thoughtfully. We need to remember this for our next trip. Always be ready for unexpected changes, she murmured. Suddenly, a loud thud turned their attention to a man who had accidentally dropped his phone while scrambling for his wallet. Francois winced sympathetically as the device skittered across the tiled floor. The man retrieved it, visibly embarrassed before catching sight of Francois holding the bread clip. His eyes lit up with recognition, and he approached their table with an awkward grin. Excuse me, he said with a slight accent. You travel with that too? Francois looked down at the clip, bemused. Yeah, I guess. Not even sure why. I think my mother must have told me about it once or I read it somewhere. I don't even remember. Old habit. You too? Why? The man chuckled, shaking his head. You'll see. It saved me more than once, my friend. 
Claire exchanged a curious glance with Francois as the man waved and walked away. The encounter left them momentarily puzzled, but before they could dwell on it, their flight's new boarding time was announced. With their boarding passes in hand, they made their way to the gate, where the scene was chaotic. Passengers jostled, eager to board and leave the suffocating confines of the terminal. Francois noticed a woman trying to calm her restless child by showing him a travel game. The child rolled a die inside a small, transparent container, reminding Francois of Claire's tip to pack one. For travel games, he smiled, finding solace in the small details that made travel bearable. As they finally boarded the plane, Francois settled into his seat, exhaustion beginning to creep in. Claire leaned over and whispered, At least the worst part is behind us, right? Francois laughed softly, tucking the bread clip back into his pocket. Little did they know, their adventure had just begun. The flight to Santorini was uneventful but filled with an air of anticipation. As Francois peered out the window, he caught sight of the deep blue Aegean Sea below, cradling scattered whitewashed buildings. For a moment, their earlier frustrations seemed insignificant and excitement replaced their exhaustion. However, as they disembarked and collected their luggage, a slight drizzle began to fall, creating a slippery sheen on the stone pathways outside the airport. Their ride to the hotel was a small van shared with other tourists. The driver, an older man with sun-weathered skin named Costas, greeted everyone with a weary smile. Apologies for the delay. Weather's been unpredictable, he muttered, gesturing to the darkening sky. The van wobbled along narrow roads bordered by cliffs and vineyards, and a silence fell over the group as raindrops tapped rhythmically on the roof. Francois's mind drifted to their upgraded room, hoping it would live up to their expectations. Claire was busy scrolling through local attractions she had saved on her phone. We should visit the old lighthouse tomorrow, she said, her voice tinged with excitement. Before Francois could respond, the van shuddered violently, causing gasps from the passengers. Costas muttered in Greek, his brows knitted in concentration as he steered the vehicle to the side of the road. It's just a flat tire, he announced, trying to sound confident. The other travelers exchanged worried glances as the rain picked up. Francois felt an odd mixture of deja vu and dread, the morning's mishaps flashing in his mind. I'll help, Francois offered, stepping out into the drizzle. Costas handed him a basic toolkit and pointed to the spare tire. As Francois crouched down, he noticed the tire jack was loose and unreliable. Frustration bubbled up. The jack slipped, nearly crushing his fingers. Claire, sensing his agitation, joined him with an umbrella. Why is it always us? She whispered, half joking. Francois managed a tired smile, but quickly refocused on the problem at hand. He reached into his pocket, and his fingers closed around the bread clip. Without thinking, he used it to secure the flimsy jack in place while Costas and another tourist stabilized the tire. Miraculously, the workaround held, and they managed to change the tire within 20 minutes. Back in the van, Costas glanced at Francois, eyes wide with surprise. Clever trick, my friend. Never thought I'd see a bread clip used like that. The other passengers nodded, some even offering a quiet clap. Claire's eyes sparkled with pride as she squeezed Francois's hand. The rain eased as they arrived at the hotel. The lobby was warm and welcoming, with staff offering towels and hot tea. The manager, Maria, approached them with an apologetic smile. We're so sorry for the inconvenience earlier. Your upgraded room is ready, she said, handing them the key. Their suite was spacious, with a view of the caldera that made every prior frustration fade. The soft glow of sunset filtered through sheer curtains, painting the room in hues of orange and pink. Francois sank into the armchair by the window, the bread clip still in his hand. He turned it over thoughtfully and looked at Claire, who was unpacking with a content smile. Maybe this trip will turn around after all, he said, half to himself. The next morning, Santorini awoke under clear skies. The couple enjoyed breakfast on the terrace overlooking the sea, soaking in the sun and the scent of salt in the breeze. The day's plan was simple. Explore the island, visit the old lighthouse, and have a romantic dinner by the water. Claire, ever the planner, double-checked their route. We should stop by that small market we passed on our way in yesterday. I hear they have unique souvenirs, she suggested. They rented a scooter from a local shop run by an old woman named Eleni, who gave them a knowing smile. Stay safe on those roads, she warned. They have a mind of their own. The ride to the market was smooth, filled with laughter and snapshots of olive trees and winding trails. They picked up handcrafted trinkets, fresh figs, and even a bottle of locally made ouzo. Francois noticed Claire's flip-flop strap was wearing thin and teased her. Still sure you don't need that bread clip for your shoes? Before she could retort, the sky shifted abruptly, with clouds rolling in faster than expected. Looks like we might need to head back sooner, Francois said, a hint of concern in his voice. But Claire waved it off. It'll pass quickly. 
Let's go see the lighthouse first. The path to the lighthouse was narrow and rugged, lined with jagged rocks and patches of wildflowers. Francois felt a pang of doubt as the wind picked up, carrying a chill. Halfway there, the scooter sputtered, coughed, and stopped. They were stranded. Not now, Francois groaned, trying to restart the engine. It refused to cooperate. Claire frowned, checking her phone. No signal. Great, she said, crossing her arms. The sky darkened, and the first drops of rain splattered on their jackets. Francois glanced around, searching for any sign of shelter. The road was deserted, framed only by shrubs and rocks. He racked his brain, trying to recall any tips from travel blogs that might apply to their situation. The sound of distant thunder quickened his pulse. As a last-ditch effort, Francois decided to examine the scooter more closely. He removed the seat panel, exposing the wires and engine. One of the ignition wires had come loose, dangling by a thread. He searched his pockets for something to secure it with and pulled out the bread clip. Claire's eyes widened. Are you serious? Again with that thing? Francois smirked, heart pounding with a mix of desperation and hope. He bent the bread clip and used it to hold the wire in place. With a silent prayer, he pressed the ignition. The scooter roared to life, sputtering but running. Claire laughed in disbelief. Okay, I take back everything I said about that bread clip. They resumed their journey, albeit cautiously, and reached the lighthouse just as the storm receded. The view was worth every second of struggle, the sun breaking through clouds casting golden beams across the sea. Don't ever travel without a bread clip in your pocket, Francois said, half-joking as they stood side by side. The truth of it sank in, and they both shared a laugh that echoed in the breeze. The lighthouse visit rejuvenated their spirits, the breathtaking view offering a temporary reprieve from the day's challenges. As they began the ride back to the hotel, the sun dipped lower, casting long, dramatic shadows over the winding road. Let's take the scenic route, Claire suggested, pointing to a path that curved through olive groves and small, tucked-away villages. Francois hesitated, a nagging voice at the back of his mind warning him to stick to the main road. But her enthusiasm was infectious, and he relented. The ride was peaceful at first, punctuated by the sounds of cicadas and the distant chime of church bells. The path, though beautiful, became narrower and rockier the further they went. Out of nowhere, the scooter lurched and skidded to a halt, this time with a metallic clank that made Francois's stomach drop. They dismounted and examined the damage. The chain had slipped off and one of the wheels looked slightly bent from a hidden rock they hadn't noticed. Claire bit her lip, trying to stay positive. Maybe there's a village nearby where we can get help, she suggested, though her voice wavered with doubt. They were surrounded by rows of olive trees and the occasional chirp of birds settling for the night. Francois's phone was dead, a casualty of forgetting to charge his power bank in the morning rush, and Claire's had no signal. He paced, scanning their surroundings. The fading daylight didn't help, and a chill began to settle in the pit of his stomach. He needed a solution fast. Running a hand through his hair, Francois pulled out the bread clip from his pocket again, half as a nervous tick and half in the vague hope it might inspire an idea. I wish there was a way to use this thing like a magic wand, he muttered. Claire raised an eyebrow, then let out an unexpected laugh. Francois, if that bread clip saves us one more time, I swear I'm framing it. The tension broke for a moment and they both laughed, the sound mixing with the wind rustling through the trees. Then, in a twist of fate, they heard the low rumble of an approaching vehicle. A white pickup truck came into view, its headlights cutting through the dusk. The driver, a middle-aged man with a salt and pepper beard, leaned out the window. Need a hand? He called in heavily accented English. They exchanged glances of relief and hurried over. The man introduced himself as Theo, a local farmer returning from his fields. He assessed the scooter with practiced eyes. You'll need tools to fix this, he said. Come with me to my house, just a short ride down the road. We can fix it there. With no other options, they gratefully agreed. Theo drove them to a modest stone cottage surrounded by groves and a small barn. Inside, the cozy warmth of a crackling fireplace and the scent of herbs greeted them. Theo pulled out a set of tools and gestured for Francois to bring the scooter closer. While Theo worked, Francois noticed a row of bread clips lined up along a shelf, each one a different color. Theo caught his gaze and chuckled. Ah, I see you notice my collection. People think I'm crazy, but these little things are more useful than they look. He pointed at one used as a clip for a curtain cord and another holding a page in place on a cookbook. Claire nudged Francois. See, it's not just you, she whispered, smiling. Francois felt a strange sense of camaraderie with Theo, and for the first time that day, he felt fully at ease. 
Theo managed to fix the scooter chain and straighten the wheel enough to get them back to their hotel. Keep this with you, he said, handing Francois an extra bread clip. One day it'll save you when you least expect it. As they rode back under a sky full of stars, Francois felt the day's events settle into a deeper appreciation for the small things, like a simple piece of plastic. Back at the hotel, the warmth of their room was a welcome comfort. Claire set their souvenirs on the table and turned to Francois. I can't believe today. From that rainstorm to Theo and his bread clips, it's like a travel story no one will believe. Francois laughed, finally letting the tension of the day melt away. He placed both the original and Theo's bread clip on the dresser, side by side. Well, now we have a story to tell that no one will think is real, he said, tracing the outline of the clips with his finger. The next morning, they decided to keep their itinerary light and relaxed. They strolled through cobblestone streets lined with shops and cafes, taking in the scent of baked pastries and the chatter of tourists. Francois found himself more present, absorbing each detail of their surroundings. A street musician played a soulful tune nearby, and for a moment it felt like they were the only two people in the world. As they sipped on iced coffee at a cafe, Claire leaned in and said, This trip started as a disaster, but somehow, it's already turned into something unforgettable. She held up her phone, which now had a faint signal, and scrolled through the photos they'd taken. Snapshots of the lighthouse, Theo's cottage, and even the bread clip that had saved their day. Francois smiled, a content warmth spreading through him. Don't ever travel without a bread clip in your pocket. Here's why, he joked, making Claire laugh so hard that people at neighboring tables glanced over with curious smiles. The rest of their trip unfolded without incident, filled with spontaneous adventures and newfound friends. As they packed for their flight home, Claire tucked both bread clips into a side pocket of Francois's bag. For the next adventure, she said, giving him a playful nudge. Francois nodded the weight of the past few days settling into a memory that would always bring a smile. And as they boarded their flight back to Marseille, Francois glanced out the window, watching Santorini fade into the distance. He knew one thing for certain. Sometimes the smallest, most overlooked items carry the greatest value when you least expect it. Have you ever thought a simple bread clip could be a travel game changer? Would you carry one in your pocket if you knew the surprising ways it could help you on the go? Thanks for tuning in, and make sure to join us again for more clever tips and tricks.